search the world But it couldn't fill me Man's empty praise Treasures the pain I never enough Then you came along Put me back together Satisfied here in your love. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing. Nothing is better than you. I'm not afraid to show you. Welcome here, everyone. How's everyone doing? Oh, I guess there's no one here because nobody answered me. So, how's everyone? Oh, I was starting to feel like a show or something. How's everyone doing? <laughs> no. Summertime. That smoke, I tell you, it's got to me yesterday. All right. It's been a while since I've been up here, so I'm just gonna act like myself, and it's just gonna be weird. So you're just gonna have to deal with that. So. All right, I'm going to get everyone to stand up. And why don't you take a few minutes to say hi to somebody that, uh, that maybe you haven't uh, said hi to before. Yeah, do that.
of all creation from water earth and sky heavens are your tabernacle glory to the lord on high god of wonders beyond our galaxy you are So this song might be a bit newer to some of you. Maybe you've heard it on the radio. Um, but I, I like the idea of starting off what we do here. Um, just, just as Christ told us to, um, in the sense that when you pray, do it in this way. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, or holy be thy name, or thy name be kept holy. Um, so you start there. You don't go to anything else. You don't go to your needs. You don't go to your wants. You don't go to any of the other stuff. You start there. And so I think um, that's what we want to start with here. So we just sang some lines, sang how holy God is, and now we're going to sing some more about that. A thousand generations Falling down in worship To sing the song of ages to the Lamb And all have gone before us And all who will believe Will sing the song of ages to the Lamb Your name is the highest Your name is the greatest your name stands above them all. All thrones and dominions, all powers and positions, your name stands above them all. And the angels cry, Holy, all creation cries. Sing the 
song forever to the Lamb. If you walk in freedom, if you bear his name, sing a song forever to the Lamb. We'll sing the song forever and amen, and the angels cry. So Jesus, you brought heaven down. My sin was great, your love was greater. What could separate us now? What a wonderful name it is. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ. What a wonderful name it is, nothing compares to this, what a wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus. 
could not hold you. You felt so before you. You silenced the boast of sin and grave. The heavens are roaring. The praise of your glory. For you What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. Thank you, everyone. Please have a seat. Well, good morning. Welcome to College Drive Community Church. Today, my name is Kimball. I'm the lead pastor. Thank you, Lane, and the rest of your team for, for leading us and directing our thoughts uh, to the holiness of God and the one that we come before today uh, in worship. Well, I hope that you've uh, had a good week despite the, the smoke um, it is something that I guess we're just dealing with every, every year, um, but that doesn't stop us from gathering together today and, uh, and worshiping. And uh, also just thinking of it's probably lots of people that are, are out camping and, and things like that, enjoying what God is, uh, is about in his world of creation. And so, yeah, good, good things that are happening. We're still alive and breathing out at SABC too. We, again, we saw... Uh, kids come to know Jesus this last week at camp, and, and that was it's so exciting. You know, if, after all the, the week, is it's pretty tiring stuff. Uh, but then when, when you just, we get together on Friday night, it's kind of a celebration staff meeting, and, and our, our staff, they just go kind of nuts. Like, they're just jumping around, dancing around, and, and just uh, letting out, you know, every, all the angst <laughs> of the week, but giving thanks to God for what he has done. So thank you for your, your prayers uh, for us as well out at camp. We've got a few things uh, to, to let you know of here. First of all, if you are, are new with us uh, or new recently and we haven't had some connection with you, please uh, take a moment and just uh, fill out a connection card. You can do that online. There's a QR code. Uh, there's also, I think, physical cards that you can do at the welcome desk. And uh, yeah, I think you can talk to, to Chris, who's there, I think, today. And there's a gift for you as well if you haven't already received one of those. Uh, today, as well as most of the Sundays in the summer, we're, we're trying to put together uh, some a Kids Quest for next week and then also one in August, so activities for kids uh, and their learning time during the summer. But usually summer is kind of a time for our volunteers to have a little bit of a break as well. But we do have some activity uh, packets at the back by the ushers or the welcome desk if you would like that for your kids today. And also the, the nursery is uh, parent-supervised today. All right, a few things happening this week. First of all, this Friday, July 21st, is our turn at the soup kitchen. And so always uh, we're requesting volunteers to help. We have a regular group of committed volunteers, but often those people also need a break and go away. And so this Friday we are looking for some, some new volunteers. Maybe you've, you've never done it before, just to come to the soup kitchen and help out there. It's from 4 till about 8 o'clock. And I know that doesn't work with everybody's schedules, but if you have some way that you can uh, help out in that way, or just then, you can talk right over here is Keelan and Julie. Uh, they'll, they'll wave right there. You can talk to them. You can also let us know in the office. We can connect you. Uh, but it is it's just such an important 
ministry. And in, in a church of our size, even though we're small in number today, but we, we should be able to get kind of eight to ten volunteers, and we only do it, uh, we commit ourselves to it on the third Friday of every month. I know others of you volunteer there throughout the week at various times, but that is our one time where we have a dedicated team. So this week we are looking for some help. Also on this weekend, on Saturday, July 22nd, this coming Saturday, we have a, a men's uh, bike trip, and it's, it's going to be meeting here, I believe, at 6 a.m. On the men's ministry bulletin board, there is a, a sign-up sheet. Uh, they're going to be meeting here, I believe, at 6 a.m. That's early for Saturday, I know, but heading to Canmore and then doing the, the Canmore Banff Loop. And so that's an opportunity for you if you would like to, to join some, some guys doing that and uh, make, that, make that happen, get some good exercise, and enjoy some good company with other guys. That's this coming Saturday. Uh, last week we mentioned the congregational survey that we've put out. We've had it in our weekly drive, and also uh, there's hard copies available uh, at the welcome desk as well as a QR code. You can do that. I think it's like four questions, four or five questions. Shouldn't take you very long, but we would love your input and uh, you can read it up on that. And if you're wondering where to pass these or put these back, you can either put it in Dale Newman's box or you can put it in the office mailbox on the side of the office building, office right there. All right, I'm going to invite my friend Amy to come on up and tell us a little bit about a, a new organization, a new faith-based ministry that's happening in, uh, in Lethbridge that she is the chapter director of. And you saw she has a table outside with some information. And so Amy's going to tell us all about Safe Families. And then you can make sure you uh, connect with her if you're going to be around after for a little bit. Okay. And uh, just a really important thing, very exciting opportunity that for us as a church, maybe you are looking for an opportunity to volunteer in a very worthwhile uh, way with other families. So go, okay. take it away. Thank you. Well, good morning, College Drive. Thank you so much for the opportunity to be able to share with you a little bit about this brand new faith-based um, nonprofit that's here in Lethbridge called Safe Families. So first of all, I just want you to think for a minute, what was the last time where you experienced crisis? Maybe it felt like a small crisis or maybe it felt like something that was actually really overwhelming for your life. But think about the people that were there. Maybe it was your church family. Maybe it was your own biological family that's here in town. Maybe some really good friends that you developed over the years. But that's where Safe Family steps in. There's lots of families within our city that when they're in crisis, they don't know where to turn. Maybe they don't have biological family or the family that they have, they're not in relationship with or aren't safe. And so that's where Safe Family loves to just get in there and to help support these families in crisis. So Safe Families is a national organization. We've got 16 chapters across Canada. It started in Toronto in Canada and then started moving its way west. And our heart is just to provide this compassionate community for people who are walking through crisis and just to be able to support them well as they walk through. So we partner with a local church. We wouldn't be able to do what we do without their help. Um, I'm sure all of you are aware of the needs in Lethbridge, which seem to be ever increasing since COVID. So we actually have the highest poverty rate for children in Alberta. One in five kids in our city is experiencing poverty. Um, and we've got a high rate of domestic abuse. We had the Lethbridge Police Service reach out to us and just share how many families are experiencing this in their homes and how many of those have young kids that are at home at the time and just they have nowhere to turn when they want to flee and kind of create that safe environment for their family. And then of course a large population of people new to Canada that don't have those natural supports that are available to them. And so that's where we step in. So we like to partner with churches to provide a circle of support around families. And so that's on that next slide there. And so, as you can see, there's a few different roles that provide this support around a family in crisis. So we get referrals from all over. We get referrals from teachers, from police departments, from hospitals. People can self-refer. Um, and we just step in. We have a conversation with the family, meet them in their home, and just talk about what is the crisis that you're experiencing? What are the supports that you're looking for from safe families? And then what are the things that would be helpful for you to do as a family to move positively through this crisis and to come out the other side. 
And so we work with a, a team of volunteers that does that. So the first is the Safe Families Church. So that's someone like yourselves that just comes alongside Safe Families and says, We're, we want to partner with you and just be a part of praying and supporting the ministry that you do. And then the next one is host families. So these are people that can take kids into their homes for anywhere from 24 hours up to three months. So as much as we can, we like to keep kids with their parents because we believe that that's God's design for how um, kids are raised up. But sometimes parents are in a situation, maybe they're struggling with mental health, maybe they've lost their job and now they've just recently lost their housing and they just need that really intensive support where their kids can be in a safe place and they can begin to look for safe housing, new income and jobs, and perhaps some help with addictions or some help with mental health struggles. And so that's where our host families come in. The next role is a family friend. So those are people that just come alongside the parents and offer the wisdom that they've just gained through their life. So sometimes that looks like some parenting wisdom. Sometimes it's help with budgeting. Sometimes it's help grocery shopping and meal prepping. And how do you make a budget stretch with inflation the way it is and grocery prices and all of that? Or sometimes it's just somebody that's going to check in on them every week and say, hey, how are you doing? I know we had talked about you reaching out to this support or that support. Have you done that? Can I help you? Those kind of things that when you're in crisis, those small steps become a struggle. And so sometimes you just need a friend that can come alongside you and encourage you to take those steps. And the next role is a family coach. So this is the person that is kind of overseeing that circle of support, the one that checks in with the family that's in crisis and sees kind of how things are going and then reaches out to the team and say, hey, they've got an interview this Friday. Is anyone available that could babysit their kids? Or maybe they just need a meal, like things seem to be really overwhelming for them this week. And then they kind of work with that goals sheet as well to say, hey, we're providing these supports. How are your goals going? What are some things that we can connect you to that can help you to continue to take positive steps forward? And then lastly is our resource friends. So those are the people that can provide those physical things that support. So that might be as simple as a meal or providing some babysitting or someone that's handy around the house and could fix a leaky tap or a window screen that's broken or a furnace that seems to be acting up. Those types of really practical supports. And so we do that all with these three values. Radical hospitality. So just showing what does the gospel look like? What did Jesus invite us to do is to be radically hospitable about the people that we have in our homes. And then to provide disruptive generosity. So this kind of giving often comes from like the people in crisis say, why would you do this for free? And then that's an opportunity to share about the generosity that's a part of the gospel and how we've experienced that and then the generosity that we want to pour out on people that are in need and then last but not least compassion fueled by mercy so just this ability that Jesus has come in the flesh and has shown such compassion for us in our need and has then given us the opportunity to to have that same compassion and to show mercy to people whose lives have been turned upside down and things are going off the tracks, but with some help and support, they can move through it positively and and get to a place where as a family, they are more stable and they're able to provide that safe and loving home for their kids. And we get to do it all in the name of Jesus, which is amazing, just to be able to share the hope and the good news of the gospel. So there's a couple of ways that you guys can be involved. I'd love to chat with you afterwards. Um, We're looking for volunteers. So that's kind of the main thing between where we are right now and being able to take referrals is having volunteers that are screened and trained and ready to go because we've been told that we're going to be receiving anywhere from 10 to 15 referrals a week from the school system and from the police department alone. And so that's going to be a big job and requiring a lot of people to come alongside those families and support them. And then also pray. Um, The work that we do is taxing. You hear a lot of really heartbreaking stories that um, can be overwhelming. And also the enemy just loves to get in there and, and just discourage and love to kind of disrupt when we're trying to do something in the name of the Lord and so you can pray for us and then also donate so right now there's just me at the chapter part-time but we would love to be able to hire another couple of staff that can really help us to um, 
connect with those families that are in struggle and then also to help us with the volunteers and to screen and train and make sure they're well supported and so those are some of the things that you can do but I'm really excited to be back in the Lethbridge area and uh, getting to know College Drive as a church and I would love to chat with you guys after so thank you so much. Thank you so much, Amy. And uh, if Amy does look familiar, she, uh, she has been around Lethbridge and uh, working at the E-Free Church previous to this and then moved to Edmonton for a while and now five years or so later is back in the community in this capacity. So please make sure you, you do connect with her, find out some more about it and uh, volunteer in, in those ways that you can. I believe I'm going to ask Lori to come up and to lead us in our prayer time together. Good morning. It's good to be back. We've, um, Russ and I just returned from a road trip to the West Coast, and um, we were just so blessed uh, along the way. It was a wonderful trip, and it was great to get away and relax together. Um, we had numerous stops along the way and uh, just enjoyed God's amazing creation. We saw uh, so many beautiful variations of towering trees and stunning flowers and amazing creatures, and it just brought to mind just the sovereignty of God, the greatness of God, the goodness of God, and I just wanted to read James 1.17 that says, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. So the following prayer is, it's just a short prayer by Max Lucado, and after I've read it, I just will pause for a short time of reflection on God's faithfulness, so I'll give you some time to um, just give your thanks to God, give your requests to God, just take time to relax in his presence, and uh, just join together as a body as we pray. Dear Father, your blessings are perfect. All that you give is good. From creation to the end, your gifts bring life to this earth. Teach me to accept what you've given. I may not always understand circumstances, but show me how they are blessings and give me gratitude for all your gifts. Rain your blessings on my friends and family today. Give them hope whatever they face. May they recognize that the good and perfect gifts are from you. Thank you that your blessings never end. You give them to us at unexpected times. And let's give our own praise and thanks to God right now. Heavenly Father, I ask that you would be with each family represented in this church body. Thank you for all of the new little ones that have joined um, our family. I just pray that you would give a special blessing to those parents who are um, just experiencing new life and all the adventures that that brings. And I just pray that you would give each one a time of refreshing this summer that we would be renewed in joy and in all your good and perfect gifts. Be with each one of us now as we open your word, and may our hearts be willing to receive what you would have us to hear, and we give you all the glory in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. All right, this morning I invite you to turn in your Bible to the book of 1 John. And we're going to be in chapter 3, verse 4 to 10. Also, if you have your scripture journal that we have provided for you, uh, if you have one of those still kicking around, you can 
pull that out or on your device as well. It'll also be on the screen. First John chapter 3, verse 4 to 10. And if you've been following along a little bit, I know some of you are kind of like, okay, hit or miss. You've been away, you come back, away, you come back, and you're like, okay, where, where are we at in this First John series? We've, uh, we've dipped back and forth a little bit. And so last week, Carson was already in chapter 4, and today I'm kind of going back to chapter 3, but just the way that things sort of worked out and some key things that we didn't want to miss uh, in the process. And so 1 John 3, verse 4 to 10 today. And it says this, Everyone who makes a practice of sinning also practices lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he appeared in order to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him keeps on sinning. No one who keeps on sinning has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Whoever practices righteousness is righteous as he is righteous. Whoever makes a practice of sinning is of the devil. For the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the works of the devil. No one born of God makes a practice of sinning, for God's seed abides in him. And he cannot keep on sinning because he has been born of God. Verse 10, by this it is evident who are the children of God and who are the children of the devil. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God nor is the one who does not love his brother. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you today for your word. Lord, it challenges us. Sometimes it's hard uh, to understand. Sometimes, Lord, we are stubborn in our will. Sometimes we, all in all, just do not want to listen. And so today, Lord, we pray that you would open up our ears, peel off the layers of our our heart that have grown hard, allow us to hear you, let your spirit do your work, Lord, in us, so that we could be able to see you and hear you more clearly from your beautiful word. Amen. You know, it's no mystery that music is a powerful thing. If I were to ask you some of your most significant memories, chances are there is a song attached to it. Maybe if you were like me and you, you played a sport in high school or like, you know, volleyball, there was like a warm-up song. Um, I, well, you know what? I had my moment, right, talking about Def Leppard a while ago. I should probably move on from that. But you know how it was, 80s, right? 80s music, is there a better era of music? I don't know. Uh, but anyways, uh, maybe, you know, f- like you, I mean, high school, you, you cruised the, the strip on Main Street in Herbert, Saskatchewan. Uh, no? Okay. Uh, it, was, it was Bon Jovi back then. Uh, maybe your grad theme song. You can remember what you walked in on, you know, walked in with. And for me, it was the, the Top Gun anthem. Right? It was an awesome song. Near, 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 near. See? I should have I had Lane come up here and just, uh, just play it before. That would have been perfect. But those memories, it takes you right back, right? Or maybe your, your wedding song or the song that you walked in or you walked out of your wedding to. Interestingly enough, a wedding we were at a couple weeks ago, they walked out, or the groomsmen actually walked into the Top Gun <laughs> anthem. So, you know, it's still around. It's still kicking. Uh, but, you know, music is powerful, right? It, it connects to our hearts. It connects to our memories. At, at camp, we teach scripture memory verses to kids in songs, right? That's how they, we, we teach them. More than memories, more than just emotional connection, I want to ask you a question today. What if your life was a song? What if your life was a song? More than just a theme song, But actually, what if it was a song? So for illustration purposes only, as you won't see that directly in the text, I want to use the idea of music or a song as a way to to connect the dots with what John is saying 
in this passage that we just read. And so we're going to walk through three points. First of all, sin is singing our own song. Secondly, Jesus is the new song. And third, we don't keep singing the old song. All right. Now, first of all, the context of this text comes out of what we talked about a few weeks ago. If you were here in our, <clears throat> in our backyard, uh, back 40 there on our, on our uh, long weekend service, and we, we talked about this really briefly before, <clears throat> before we went into our, our communion time, but from 1 John 3, verse 1 to 3, and this is the foundation for how God has interacted with us as his creation from the beginning. Now, John talks about things often as he says, this is what you heard from the beginning. And what he's talking about is not from the beginning of all time, the beginning of creation. He's saying to his audience, this is what you have heard from the beginning when you first heard the gospel. When you first responded to Jesus this is what you heard, this is what you were taught, and that was your beginning. What I'm saying here is that from the very beginning, from creation, this is the song of God, the song of love. He created us out of love, and he invites us to be his love children, as this initial passage right before this one says. He invites us as his children, to come, to be under his care as the father. And so as we receive that love, it then motivates us to live lives of of purity. It really is the father's love song over us. Zephaniah 3 verse 17 says, The Lord your God is with you, the mighty warrior who saves. He will take great delight in you. He will no longer rebuke you, but will rejoice over you with singing. You know, there's a lot of passages in the Bible that speak of his power and his salvation, but God, the Father, actually singing over his children. What kind of song would it be? But Just a guess, but I, I think it would be a love song, and in my mind, it's an 80s rock ballad. I was kind of disappointed, Lane, that you weren't wearing like your, your Demon Hunter shirt this morning. I mean, come on, but this, the word that is used here to describe how the Father sings over us as his children, it means a ringing cry, it's a loud shout, it's a proclamation of extreme joy and an expression of gladness. You know, it's, it's been a while since I've used an illustration of my granddaughter, Macy, but lately we've been getting these videos of, of her, you know, trying, you know, standing up on her own, right, in her, in, her, in her crib, her playpen. She grabs onto things and she pulls herself up and she's got these fat little legs wobbling, you know, she stands up. And as our, our daughter, Bria, is, is videoing her, you know, she's cheering her on. You know, she's exclaiming it like she's so passionate. But she's like, way to go, Macy, you're doing amazing. You're so great. That's awesome. And, and there's these little pictures we have of Macy. I could probably talk the whole time about Macy, but I won't. But she kind of looks and she gets these pictures and it's kind of like, look at me, look at me, like look what I've done. You know, all proud of herself. She's standing up, she's crawling upstairs and her daughter and her son-in-law behind her are just like cheering her on. Just this, this exclamation of joy. And this is this picture of the father just singing over us and exclaiming with gladness how much he loves us. So if we take the idea that God is, is singing over us. Let's allow that to, to be the foundation as we dive into verse 4 to 6 initially. First of all, sin. What is sin? Sin is singing our own song. Verse 4 says, Everyone who makes a practice of sinning also practices lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. So sin is basically saying you are a law unto yourself. You do whatever you want. Since the fall that we read of in Genesis 3, we have a sin nature. It's our natural self, and our natural self always leads us to wilderness, never to fruitfulness. It's the tune that we live by. 
seeking to please ourselves rather than to obey God. This is a familiar tune. It's what we know. It's a melody that is like one of those songs that you hear and, you know, you just can't get it out of your head. This is what sin does. It, it elevates and promotes self while disregarding the instruction of God. Now, every time you set something other than God on the throne of your life, including yourself, it leads to ruin. The Bible also says that sin has a penalty, and either you pay it or someone else had to. And we know the beautiful gospel is that Jesus came and did that for us. See, if our sin was inconsequential, didn't matter, then Jesus would not have had to die for it. Now, the daily cost of, of humming this tune in our lives is, is great. There's a great cost on all fronts, physical, emotional, relational, and on and on. But the Bible says that the ultimate results of singing this song, this sin song, are costly. Romans 6 verse 23 says that the wages of sin is death. That's the, that's the return. That's what you get for it is death. And this is speaking of eternal spiritual death. As opposed to what the Apostle Paul goes on to say, there, there's another option. And it's good news. And that is to receive the gift of God that is eternal life found in Jesus. Romans 3 21 to 26 says, But now, apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been made known, to which the law and the prophets testify. This righteousness is given through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. There's no difference between Jew and Gentile, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. God presented Christ as a sacrifice of atonement through the shedding of his blood to be received by faith. He did this to demonstrate his righteousness because in his forbearance he had left the sins committed beforehand unpunished. He did it to demonstrate his righteousness at the present time so as to be just and the one who justifies those who have faith in Jesus. And so we see that we fall short but that God came in and, and always the rescuer sent his son Jesus to be our justice and the one who justifies. And so secondly, we see that Jesus is the new song. He's the new song. Verse 5 says, you know that he appeared, he, Jesus, appeared in order to take away sins. And in him there is no sin. Jesus, the sinless one. The one John the Baptist recognized when he saw him, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He came, away, came to take away sin, and verse 7 says that he came to destroy the works of the devil. What's the work of the devil? Well, it's sin. That's what his work is. I don't... No, if he gets up every day and says, well, I'm going to get my work clothes on, but in your mind, you could think this way. That's what he does, his work, every day. Well, let's get out there and get rebellious. Let's get out there and accuse people. Let's get out there and tear down the works of God. Let's get out there and confuse, manipulate, steal, kill, and destroy. And John says that the work of Jesus is, is to take care of that, to destroy the work of the devil. See, he's been up to this from the very beginning. And he's been singing this enticing temptation song from the very first time we see him in Scripture with Adam and Eve. Now, when you think of the devil song, you might think, oh, it must be like thrash metal or something like that. But you know what? It's more like a sultry lullaby. Gently whispering in our ear, cajoling us to God rebellion. But God sent a Savior, Jesus. And his name means the Lord saves. His mission is to provide a means of salvation. And for centuries, 
people of Israel looked forward to the promise of a Savior. They had moments of confusion. They didn't always get what that meant. But God's word and through the prophets and through the poets told us that there would be a new song to be sung. And the work of Jesus on the cross and by his resurrection meant that there would be a way to be forgiven and to hear the God song clearly. An invitation to new life. Psalm 40 verse 3 says, He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. Psalm 96 verse 1 and 2 says, Oh, sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Sing unto the Lord. Bless his name. If today, if you have by faith received Jesus Christ and have begun to abide with him, You've received his Holy Spirit. And listen, the entire song sheet of your life has changed. 2 Corinthians 5 or 17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old is gone and the new is here. And finally, third, we don't keep singing our old song. Verse 6 says, No one who abides in him keeps on sinning. No one who keeps on sinning has either seen him or known him. Now, really important, as you read this, you go, oh man, that's, that's a pretty high standard. John is, is not saying that once you receive Jesus, that you stop sinning and you enter into this, this perfected state. I, I don't know about you, but I, I mean, it would be great if that was the case, um, but it's not. And John already has confirmed this earlier in his book. He said in chapter 1, he says it's actually a deception to believe that you do not sin. And he said in verse, chapter 1, verse 9, that when we do sin, we confess our sins. And he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He goes on to say in chapter 2, right at the beginning, he says, I write to you so that you will not sin... But if anybody does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. So what John is talking about here is not a, a perfect life. It's a life that's characterized by the ongoing, self-endorsing habit of sin. Let me hear that again. He's talking about a life that is characterized by an ongoing, self-endorsing habit of sin. See, if you've truly surrendered to Christ, your life song is being transformed. There's the ongoing work of sanctification. You're becoming like Jesus. And this honestly is a work of learning to sing the God song. What was old was familiar, and you can easily fall back into it. But, you know, it's going to require some change. I liked what Carson said last week. He said, you know, it's, 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 not, it's not that we don't try, right? It's not that, that there isn't actually putting effort in. The gospel is not opposed to effort but earning. We don't do it so that we would earn it. But we have to put some effort in. And coming to Christ, there, there might mean, there will mean some changes, that could happen, need to happen in your life. Conscious, active steps of obedience. It could mean very easily a change of friendships. People you hang out with. It could mean a change in, in what you do for fun, recreation activities. It could mean a change in your priorities. It will. It might even mean a change in vocation. If you've surrendered your life to God... And now you're singing a new song. There's going to have to be some transformation that is evident in your life. N.T. Wright says this. What John is talking about here is the whole habit of life. Sinning as the regular mode in which we live. We should be doing our best to avoid all kinds of sin all the time. Though we shall surely fail. But listen, this is important. But the failures must take place within the settled 
a settled habit of life in which sin is no longer setting the tone. We're playing a different piece of music now, and even if our fingers slip sometimes and lay some wrong, play some wrong notes, notes that belong to the music we used to play, that doesn't mean we're going back to that old music for real once more. John actually says something quite wild here. He says that believers have the seed of God within them. Quite literally, this, this word, the Greek word for seed, is it's sperma. And we're not going to go into a biological lesson here of things. But, you know, just like you carry the DNA of your biological parents, and you really can't help the nose that you have or the color of your eyes, he's saying, as a child of God, you've been reborn with the very spiritual DNA of God. And so sin is your old life song. And you're given a new one, reborn in Christ. You know, the question of this series that we've said from the beginning, am I in the light? And this, this text serves as a, a dire warning, really. If your life is characterized by the ongoing, self-endorsing, habitual life of sin, John would say you should question whether you have truly surrendered to the new life found in Jesus. John says the fruit of this new song is a life of righteousness and a life of love. Those are the two metrics. And so if your life is not reflective of these two clear metrics, it would seem that you are singing not only your own sin song, but you're dancing to the devil's song. He says there's only two kinds of children. Children of the light, children of God, and children of the devil. Ephesians 5, verse 1 to 10 says, Follow God's example, therefore, as dearly loved children, and walk in the way of love. Just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. But among you there must not be even a hint of sexual immorality or any kind of impurity or greed. Because these are improper for God's holy people. Nor should there be obscenity, foolish talk, or coarse joking, which are out of place, but rather thanksgiving. For of this you can be sure, no immoral, impure, or greedy person, such a person is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of such things God's wrath comes on those who are disobedient. Therefore do not be partners with them. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. So live as children of light. For the fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. And find out what pleases the Lord. So this morning I leave you with this simple question. What song is your life singing? Let's pray. God, in this world that we live in that is so set up in opposition to God, where there is temptations on every side and opportunities abound for us to walk in disobedience to you. Lord, you've, you've changed the music for us. So we've called out to you and we've said, Lord, we need your salvation. We need your forgiveness. We need your power to enable us to fight sin, to fight the evil in this world. And you've given that to us, and you've made it possible through Jesus. And now, Lord, as we seek to walk out this new song, we need your strength and we need your power every day. And so I pray, Lord, that you would fill us anew with your spirit today. Refresh our, our hearts if we feel like we're, we're kind of down. If there is sin that has taken a hold in our life, if there's cracks in us, Lord, in our spiritual lives that are are taking control or we feel like we are losing ground, Lord, would you remind us again the power of the cross, what you have done for us, 
And Lord, the, the song of our hearts, may it be that we want to worship you and live for you. Amen. So just to add to what Kimball said here, I think that's, that's all um, really good. And I think it's real easy for everyone to just be like, oh, oh, I'll be real good after this. I promise, you know, like, and I don't think that's what Kimball's getting at here. That's not what, that's not what the Bible's getting at here. Um, just remember when you walk out of here, if you have Christ, if you have him, um, if, you, um, if you follow him, um, there's no condemnation, so please don't walk out of here thinking, oh, I suck, because um, you don't. Um, you're loved, and so um, we're going to tie this all together with the music theme, so I'm going to get you all to stand here, and we're going to sing uh, Who You Say I Am, and just as you walk out of here, just let this song, if you forget everything, anything else today, let just remember that, um, yeah, this you are you are a new creation so and and that was the perfect analogy that we're singing a new song and sometimes you uh, all of us up here know sometimes and you, you miss a note and but that doesn't mean that you're not in tune um, with God <laughs> that the highest king would welcome me. I was lost, but he brought me in. Oh, his love for me. Oh, his love for me. Like a sunset spring. Oh, his spring. child of God. Yes, I am. Free at last, he has ransomed me. His grace runs deep. Well, I was a slave to sin. Jesus died for me. Yes, he died for standing we're going to sing another song as we close but uh, before I, I do the benediction I just want to say next Sunday you want to be here if you can we are going to have teen challenge with us 
And uh, just as we've sung about uh, people that have been set free, you're going to hear some incredible testimonies of people being set free. And they're also going to have a, a free will offering. They'll have a machine. If you wanted to uh, donate to uh, the ministry, the mission of Teen Challenge, that will be available to you as well uh, next Sunday. But yeah, don't miss that. Um, also, we are going to be going to the food court today after for lunch. If you are wanting to join us over there, we I try to get over there as fast as I can, but usually um, not so quickly leaving here. But whoever is over there, we usually sit in a certain area at the Crave food court and just get to know each other a little bit better and have some food together, order whatever you like from there. And that uh, probably around 12.30 or so is when most people will start to get over there. And you're welcome to, to join us and hope you find us there. <clears throat> now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. May God bless you. He became sin who knew no sin that we might become his righteousness he humbled himself and he carried the cross love so amazing love so amazing Jesus Messiah
Jesus Messiah, Lord of all, Jesus Messiah. everyone. Have yourselves a great week.